hey, you know everyone has that something that really, really makes them angry. Something that every time it happens, whether it's road rage or the way that somebody does something or treats you. Or the laptop not being charged. Yeah, that it just absolutely aggravates you and brings about an emotion called anger. And uh, we um, are going to talk about today something that the uh, that the Apostle Paul talks about in Romans that really just makes God angry and in and incites His wrath. Hi, my name's Pete, and this is my wife Shauna, and we're ordained ministers in the Church of God. And on a daily basis, we invite you in our home to share in our Bible study process. This is the way we disciple our family, and hopefully, you'll begin to do it in your home as well. Uh, today's scripture comes from Romans 1, 18-25. I mentioned charging the iPad because that is a pet peeve of mine, and I just went off about it a few minutes ago whenever we broke the iPad out and I thought it wasn't charged. So, just so you know. Computer. Right. But we, uh, laptop. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but it, it wasn't, I thought it wasn't charged. So, our scripture today is Romans 1, 18-25. I'm going to read two verses, bookends, 18 and 25. Uh, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wick ungodliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth for their wickedness. They exchange the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator who is forever to be praised. Amen. And that's just verses 18 and 25. Go through and read the rest of those verses too because they're really good. That's right. Um, you know, it is... Um not anything ever that I want to be a part of is the wrath of God. Right. Never want to be a part of it. Never want to do anything that would, um, you know, incite God's rage or our wrath or our anger toward me. Well, the thing that we see here is the thing that does that is he says, forsaking the truth and going after a lie. Mm -hmm. He said that invokes the wrath of God. Yeah. And he says, if you want to make God angry, ignore the truth yeah. and we see this in our society every day all day long people have exchanged the truth of God for lies yeah. we see it in our society actually has a term for it. it's called relativism mm -hmm. and what that basically means is truth is relative to the beholder yeah. so I can believe one way I can say this is right and I, Shauna can believe the other way and say it's wrong mm -hmm. I can look at those roses on our table and say they're red Shauna can look at them and say they're blue and society says you're both right you can't say that they're not blue because she thinks they're blue. They're red, right? And that, and we see it with uh, transgenderism. I'm, I'm a female, but you're, you've got the sex organs of a male, right? They've betrayed the truth, and they've bought into this lie that they can choose their own sexuality. And that's just simply not the case. Uh, and, and honestly, it's not just rejecting the truth, but it is chasing after a lie. And when you pursue something, that is uh, something you want to obtain. Uh, so it's not enough just to live that way on your own. You want to obtain and make sure that it is founded with other people. Um, and you're, you're basically wanting to prove your point saying, ha ha, I'm really my own God. Right. And the, the thing about it is, is verse 22 in the, in the middle there says, although they claim to be wise, they actually become fools. Mm -hmm. They got so book smart that they become stupid. That's the hillbilly way of saying it, right? <laughs> they got, you know, and, and that's that's what our world is seeing. They're so intelligent. They're so wise. Oh, we're so far your comprehension. Your thinking is so medieval and out of date. You don't Not understand, right? The progressive culture that we live in today, and 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 basically they've become so wise that God says they're fools in His eyes. Mm -hmm. And the standard for truth is God's word. Absolutely. God's word is the truth. So if we encounter things that contradict God's word, we don't change God's word to match our thought process. We change our thought processes to match God's word. And you know, the world has been unwilling to do this. The world has decided that they will exchange the truth of God for lies because it fits the lifestyle they want to live. It actually just feeds our flesh. Um, and when we find ourselves... Uh, chasing after if we we if we claim to be children of God and we find ourselves chasing after a lie just to satisfy our flesh or, or or a situation so that we don't have to do the hard things like accept the truth and endorse the truth and enforce the truth 
um, that is going to bring about some uh, anger of God, some wrath of God. Now, God's mercy is always there. His grace mm -hmm. is always there. But there's some requirements for us in order to receive that, and that is repentance. And obedience. And obedience, humility, um, in order to make sure that we stay on God's good side. And we want to be on God's good side because on his good side is protection. On his good side is um, love, eternal life, love, love eternal peace, life, yeah. comfort, strength, ability, talent, skill, all of those things. And anointing, um, that breaks the yoke. And what the yoke is that? It's a yoke of bondage. Uh, we don't want to find ourselves in that situation. We want to find ourselves seeking after the truth. That is the word of God. And the, the thing that we have to realize is that as long as we're breathing, we have the mercy of God upon us right now. Uh, you may be separated from God. You may not know him in your personal life, but I want you to know that if you have bread, you have hope. That you're, it's not too late, right? If we leave this world and we don't know Jesus, then it is too late at that point. Mm -hmm. But right now, you have an opportunity to reconcile through Jesus Christ what was destroyed through our sinful behavior. And that was a lasting relationship with God that was meant to be eternal. And it can be restored through the blood of Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is, like Shauna said, you have to repent of your sins. Tell him you're sorry for what you have done. You have to acknowledge him as Lord. And you do that by how? Applying his teachings and precepts and his word. And that truth to your life. That's right. You live the truth. And, then you, and then, then you know what the Bible says? You profess with your mouth and believe with your heart and you are saved. The Bible tells us that uh, they, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. You know, there is freedom um, mm -hmm. in Christ. There is freedom in the truth. There is freedom in pursuing the truth. You know, we've been studying in Romans chapter 7. And one of the things that we have discussed is the fact that what in six and seven is what sets us free is pursuing after righteousness and pursuing after the truth, setting down the sin, mm -hmm. and not walking back into that bondage because sin will enslave you. Um, but uh, freedom uh, comes only with the truth. So let's pursue truth and let's um, please God with our faith and uh, with our works. So going forward this week, keep reading. Chapter one is great. We're getting into some good stuff here. And it's going to keep getting deeper as we go in further into the week. But what we want you to do is every day we want you to take time to encounter God. Take time to exalt God. Mm -hmm. Give Him praise and honor for what He has done. Take time to edify yourself by reading the Word and, in, and taking the truth in. Absolutely. Putting the truth inside you. And engage this world with the truth. That's in right. love. Right. In love and compassion. That's so until right. next time, God bless. God bless you.